to hear them more than to hear, to hear me, so I'll pass the mic to them now. Thank you. Actually, uh, Brother Andy, I'd like to hear your voice more. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'd just like to uh, welcome everybody on behalf of the uh, University of Tasmania Muslim Students Society and everyone who helped make this event possible. Thank you all for this uh, opportunity for us to talk about the noble prophet, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, before, before I get started, I just wanted to uh, get a show of hands how many of the audience are Muslims? How many non-Muslims? How many, how many Muslims? Looks like majority. How many non-Muslims? Uh, how many uh, Christians? Okay, cool. That's good. So welcome to uh, our Christian uh, friends today. Um, my name is uh, Ismail, and uh, there's uh, Dr. H, otherwise known as Hamdi, and uh, we're part of the, the Islamic Message uh, team, where we try to uh, explain more about Islam, especially to uh, non-Muslims, and we're also part of the Hikmah Institute, where we focus on courses, uh, which are self-development courses uh, for Muslims and non-Muslims as well. So tonight, tonight's talk, uh, we're talking about Jesus as a prophet of Islam. So my objective today is not to uh, look at any uh, biblical references or any uh, of that, that nature. Uh, but what I'm hoping to share with my brothers and sisters is more about how we look at uh, Jesus Isa in Arabic, peace be on him, from the eyes of Islam. So when we look at the sacred text, we look at the Quran and the reports of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, let's take a look at what status that we look at Jesus, peace be on him, from as a Muslim. So we'll begin by taking a look at uh, the mother Mary. So we'll start at the birth of Jesus, right from where it begins. And as Muslims, we always believe that uh, the mother Mary was chaste, a chaste woman, a special woman. In fact, she was one of the greatest women, one of the four greatest women, as the Prophet Muhammad says, that she was one of the four greatest women to have attained excellence, excellence in her religion. The other, the other three are Khadija, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad, Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad, and Asiya, who was the wife of Pharaoh at the time of Moses. So these, these four, including uh, the mother Mary, they were the four of the greatest women in the whole of the, of the as what we would say, Islam, as uh, believers, believing women. So what I would like to do is now look at the story of the birth, the miraculous birth of Jesus from the Quran. And what I'll do is, we'll, uh, we'll get it in a bit of a unique way. Where I'll read, I'll read the verses in the Quran, and then I'll get uh, Brother Hamdi to translate the verses, to read the translation for us. So this is, uh, these verses that I'm reading are in chapter number 19. That's uh, the chapter Miriam, Miriam, Miriam. And this is, the, this whole chapter is named after her. And uh, what, what, what we find, you'll find the reference later, these are from verses 19 to 35. So what I'll do is to get the atmosphere a bit different so you can feel how the Qur'an is when it's being recited. Inshallah, I'll recite it. Inshallah, for those who, uh, who don't know about the Arabic language, Inshallah means if God wills. So if you hear your Muslim, uh, non -Muslim, uh, Muslim friends say Inshallah, uh, it means God willing. So what I'll, what I'll, uh, I'll begin by reciting the Qur'an so you can hear it in the original Arabic. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكر في الكتاب مريم إذ انتبذت من أهلها مكانا شرقيا. And mention, O Muhammad, in the book 
the story of Mary when she withdrew from her family to a place toward the east. And she took in seclusion from them a screen. Then we sent to her our angel, and he represented himself to her as a well-proportioned, handsome man. She said, Indeed, I seek refuge in the most merciful from you, so leave me if you should be feared of Allah. He said, I am only the messenger of your Lord to give you news of a pure boy. She said, How can I have a boy while no man has touched me and I have not been in a chest? He said, Thus it will be. Your Lord says, It is easy for me, and we will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And it is a matter already decreed. So she conceived him and she withdrew with him to a remote place. And the pains of a childbirth drove her to the trunk of a palm tree. She said, Oh, I wish I had died before this and was in oblivion forgotten. But he called her from below her, Do not grieve. Your Lord has provided beneath you a stream. And shake toward you the trunk of the palm tree. It will drop upon you ripe fresh dates. So eat and drink and be contented. And if you see from among humanity anyone, say, Indeed, I have vowed to you to the most merciful abstention, so I will not speak today to any man. Then she brought him to her people, carrying him. They said, O oh Mary, you have certainly done a thing unprecedented. Oh, sister of Aaron, your father was not a man of evil, nor was your mother a chaste. فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا. So she pointed to him. They said, How can we speak to the one who is in the cradle, a child? قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا. Jesus said, 
Indeed, I am the slave of Allah. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. And he has made me blessed wherever I am and has enjoined upon me prayer and zakat, charity, as long as I remain alive. وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And made me dutiful to my mother, and he has not made me a wretched tyrant. وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبَعَثُ حَيَّا And be peace is on me the day I was born. And the day you will die, and the day I am raised alive. That's Jesus, the son of Mary. The word of truth about which they are in dispute. For Allah to take a son, exalted is He. When He decrees an affair, He only says to it, Be and it is. Be and it is. So these are the verses from chapter number 19, Surah Maryam. And these are amazing verses. And you might think, people might think, that how can such an amazing thing happen? A miraculous birth with a mother and no father, no father involved. I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Hamdi now to explain further how, what God says about this. No. Allah, God the Exalted said that Jesus was a miracle. It was a miraculous birth. But he said and he confirmed, and it's actually Jesus himself confirmed that he is as any one of us, a slave of Allah, a human being, the one that is owned by the God that created everyone and everything. And he is an honored prophet and he has a message to us. We may wonder and say, it's a bit hard to understand how come a man, a boy, would be born without a father. God in the Quran talks to us, explains to us everything that we have or may question about religion. And about this aspect, God subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Jesus as a miracle, the birth of Jesus as a miracle, it's not any more than the creation of Adam. Jesus had no father, but Adam had no father and no mother. Actually, for us, when we think about it, we find out that Adam should be difficult, should be difficult for creation, because there is no one, or there is no father for him, there is no mother for him. In the next slide, Allah spoke again about Jesus, peace be upon him, and his mother. He said that he was a messenger, and his mother was a supporter of the truth. One of the beautiful things in the Quran, when we read it, and I would like also to invite uh, 
our uh, non-Muslim friends to have a look at it as well, is how God speaks to us. For Jesus, as God says in the Quran, that he didn't say he is either the son of God or God himself. So when God refuted this idea, he still gave the honor that Jesus deserved and his mother deserved. So he said that his mother was a supporter of the truth and he was a messenger. And he gave, he gave more explanation or an indication. He said, كَانَ يَأْكُلَانِ الطَّعَامِ They used, they both used to eat, to eat. And it's not befitting for God, or if we say Mary is the mother of God, to be eating and drinking. And we all know if we need to eat, that means we will need to buy the food, we will feel hungry, so we will have a need, and we will have a need later on to evacuate this food afterwards. And this is not befitting for God. With the next slide, Brother Ismail will talk to us more about what was the message of Jesus, peace be upon him. So when we look at the message, the message of uh, Isa and Islam, that's Jesus, look at the message of Nuh, Noah, the message of all the different prophets, the prophets that we respect in Islam and other, uh, the other uh, Judeo-Christian uh, faiths, they uh, revere and they honor. You can see that the same message, well, from the point of view of the, from the Quran, from the Islam, the, the core message is the same message, and that's to worship of one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we find in the Quran. For example, this verse here, He has ordained for you of deen, the way of life, what, we, what He enjoined upon Noah, and that which we reveal to you. O Muhammad, and what we enjoined upon Abraham, Moses, and Jesus to establish the religion and not be divided therein. Difficult for those who associate others with Allah is that to which you invite them. Allah chooses for Himself whom He wills and guides to Himself whoever turns back to Him. This is in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse 13. So the core message is the same of all these different prophets. This is what, as Muslims, this is what we believe. And this is reiterated in the next verse. And I'll show you. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and just for the non-Muslims, the subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm saying is when we talk about God or we talk about Allah, this, this, this little phrase that we say after when we say subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means perfect. How perfect is God? And how great and exalted is He? How high up is He? This is out of respect and out of honor for God. He's so perfect and so unique. So another, another verse in the Quran that shows us the core message, the core message of Islam and the fact that, uh, that Isa, that Jesus alayhi salam, alayhi salam meaning that peace be upon him, the peace from God be upon him, is that he also got inspiration. Just as Noah and other prophets got the inspiration. So in this verse, we see, verily, we have inspired you, O Muhammad, as we inspired Noah and the prophets after him. We also inspired Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the Asbat, the twelve sons of Jacob, Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, and Solomon, and to David we gave the Zabur, the Psalms. So this is showing the brethren, the brotherhood of the prophets, the brotherhood of the prophets. And we as Muslims, we love and we respect all these prophets. In fact, we believe in the message of all these prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, ordering us as Muslims, Kulu, Kulu in Arabic language is that command. It's a verb or it's a command verb. 
So all of you together say this. And what should we say? Amanna billahi wa ma unzila ilayna wa ma unzila ila Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq wa Yaqub wa Asbaq wa ma utiya Musa wa Isa wa ma utiya an-nabiyyuna min rabbihim la nufarriqu bayna ahadin minhum wa nahnu lahu muslimun. Say O Muslims, we believe in Allah and that which was sent down to us and that which has been sent down to Abraham Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and to the Asbat. And that which has been given to Moses and Jesus, and that which has been given to the prophets from the Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and to him we have submitted in Islam. So we have submitted. That's what Islam is, submission to the one God, the Creator. The points that have been underlined, that we make no distinction between them, what does that mean? Distinction in what sense? Distinction in the sense that they, they came and they conveyed the same message. The message of the oneness of Allah, the oneness of God, the Creator, to worship one God alone. So when we say we believe, this is what we believe. We believe in the same monotheism that all the different prophets from Abraham, from before him, from Noah, all the way until now, until the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him. All the same message. So this is from a Muslim point of view, what we would believe. Now let's take a look at a few of the miracles of Jesus. And Dr. H will take us through the next segment. So now, for our Christian friends and for everybody here. We all heard about the miracles of Jesus. And God didn't deny these miracles. I was asked once, like the miracle should be only happen to one person. Meaning that God does the miracle directly. But a person cannot have a direct miracle, cannot have the ability to make a miracle. But if we look at this, God, what he would do is he would give us the permission, the permission to a miracle. He would give us the ability if he won't. And that's what he did with the Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. He gave him a few miracles. He taught him the books and as we mentioned in the previous verses, he spoke while he was one who was uh, in a very young age, who was still a baby. He gave him miracles that he can create. He can create clay, make them birds. He gave, he gave him miracles that he can make the dead alive. He gave him miracles that for the diseases that were spread, widespread at that time, he could cure from them. If we think about the disease part, when God sends a message, he also sends signs for us. He sends sign, he sends an evidence, a proof that this is coming from God. So at that time, these diseases will not be cured. And God would give Jesus the ability to cure. And God would give Jesus the ability to make the dead alive. Why would he do that? Because Jesus was sent to people who were taking everything too literal would take everything without believing, believing. If I cannot see this chair, so there is no chair. If I cannot see behind the door, there is nothing behind the door. That's what they believed in. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed them signs that can exceed their mental abilities. Uh, 
And we also believe that Jesus had supporters. He had disciples. And that happens with many of the prophets. Even Prophet Muhammad had disciples and supporters. And this is not undeniable. The other thing is, when every prophet comes or was sent and the revelation comes to him, there were always people believing in his message and there were always people against him. And actually, in most prophets, in most prophets, they were always the ones who believed in the messenger or the prophet were a minority, were very few people. In the Quran, God says that Jesus wasn't crucified. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned God prays to him, mentioned that when the time came that they tried to plan, to plot the people that he was sent to, the children of Israel, when they tried to plot against him and they made a plan to torture him and to kill him, God ascended him to the sky. So a part of our belief as Muslims, we believe that he did not, he did not die. He was ascended alive and he is still alive and he will come back. He will come back before the judgment day and he will show the original message that he came to before he dies. Also, with every prophet, every prophet would come to people with glad tidings and also come as a warner. And a part of him from his message, or a part of his message was to tell people that there will be a messenger comes after me. Of course, they will not see the messenger at that time, but the next generations, the ones that the messenger will be sent to, they will see him. And they will leave this with Brother Ismail to continue uh, the message about the messenger that comes after Jesus. Okay, so one of the, the prophecies of Prophet Jesus, Prophet Isa, is now that we told about in the Quran, he says that a, a prophet whose name will be Ahmed will come after him. Ahmed is an Arabic word for the one who is most praised. The one who is most praised. It has, uh, for those who know the Arabic language, it has a special uh, type of verb which is a superlative in that, in that sense. So it means the one who is most praiseworthy. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him, if you look in the Arabic uh, language, his, this is one of his names which he said, that his name is Muhammad, his name is Ahmed, his name is Al-Mahi, the one who wipes out the, the, the evil from the, from the earth, the one, his name is uh, the Hashir, the one uh, at whom everybody will be gathered, that's on the, on the uh, Day of Resurrection. And uh, these different names, uh, you can find them in the, the books of the Hadith where the Prophet, peace be on him, he told us about his different names. So this is one of his names which is mentioned in the Quran, Ahmed, and it's the same, it has the same uh, connotations as Muhammad. Muhammad means the one who is the most praiseworthy, the one who is praised, uh, praised much. So this uh, verse here is what Allah uh, glorified and exalted, be He glorified be God. He tells us that, that Isa, that uh, Jesus, peace be on him, made this prophecy. 
And you can find this prophecy in, in, the, in other places, in the biblical references as well, but this is out of the scope of today. But this is one of the things, one of the prophecies that we as Muslims will be reading in the Quran and then we believe that Ahmed will be coming. And we know that's Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him. Now what's the purpose of um, these prophets coming? Let's take a look at the, the next verse where we can find that in Surah Baqarah, verse uh, 2, uh, uh, sorry, uh, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, Allah tells us the wisdom behind sending the prophets. Mankind were one community, and Allah sent prophets with glad tidings and warnings. And with them He sent the scripture in truth to judge between people and matters wherein they differed. And only those whom the scripture was given differed concerning it after clear proofs had come unto them through hatred, of one to another. Then Allah by His leave guided those who believed to the truth of that wherein they differed, and Allah guides whom He wills to a straight path. So this is the, the wisdom of, of God that we as human beings, we might be differing, we might have desires, we might have doubts. And so people from time to time in the ages, when the Prophet came to them, they were on the path of that Prophet. And some of them, because of their desires, because of doubts that Satan put in them, they diverted from the path. So in the wisdom of God, He sent down new prophets. And the prophet who came after Jesus, peace be on him, was Prophet Muhammad Peace and blessings of God be upon him. So, why did Jesus, why was it necessary for Him to come? We'll see in the next slide that the religion of Isa salam, the oneness, the Tawheed, it was changed. Here we find some verses in the Quran where Allah is talking about a dialogue that will happen between Jesus and God on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment. Where Allah, where God is asking Jesus these, these questions. And Allah says, and beware the day when Allah will say, O Jesus, son of Mary, did you say to the people, take me and my mother as deities besides Allah? He will say, exalted are you. It was not for me to say that to which I have no right. If I had said it, you would have known it. You know what is in, within myself, and I do not know what is within yourself. Indeed, it is you who is the knower of the unseen. Continuing on, I said not to them, except what you commanded me, to worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. And, so this, this is what Jesus is saying, He's saying to God what He said to the people. To worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. That's what the command that He told His, his people. And I was a witness over them, as long as I was among them. But when you took me up, you are the observer over them, and you are over all things a witness. It's in chapter number 5, the closing verses of chapter number 5. So this is, in essence, is what we believe about Jesus, peace be on him. That his message was the same message as Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him. The same message as Moses, the same message as Abraham, those before them, those after them all the different prophets, one God, one Creator, the one who gave us all our senses, the one who gave us our life, each breath that we have, each moment of happiness, each moment of sadness, it comes all from Him, the one Creator, and the one that we adore, naturally the one who has given us everything, our families, our life, our abilities, our health, He is the one that we should be thankful to. He is the one we should run to, seeking His forgiveness, seeking His mercy. I'll conclude my part with one saying of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him. Just reiterating the point of the importance of not showing divinity to a created man, a created human being. Narrated Umar. Umar was one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, one of the most illustrious companions. He said, I heard the Prophet saying, 
Do not exaggerate in praising me as the Christians praised the son of Mary, for I am only a slave. So call me the slave of Allah and his apostle, his messenger. This is in Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari, for the benefit of our non-Muslim brothers and sisters here, is one of the authentic books, authentic collections of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be on him. It was transmitted verbatim from generation to generation. And in fact, you can still find people who memorize the whole book by heart. So, this message is the message of keeping divinity to the one God, worshipping the one God and not ascribing divinity to the men, to the human beings, the men or women. This is in essence what we believe as Muslims. So in conclusion, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Hamdi to give us a brief overview, a brief, brief conclusion of, over what we've come across today. So uh, to conclude, to conclude the belief in Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, in the Islamic point of view, Jesus was an honorable messenger, a great messenger, and we believe in him as a messenger of Islam too. However, we are commanded by God not to exceed our limits by calling him except a messenger and a human being. And he is not God and he is not the Son of God. The message of Jesus was as similar as the message of any other prophet, which is to worship God alone and to submit to him. His mother, his mother, Mary, peace be upon her, was an honorable woman. She was worshipping Allah, worshipping God all her life. And she actually committed herself to this, since her mother committed her to that or since she was born. And she was a virgin and a chest and she was all the time honorable woman. And Allah said to us that she is one of the best four women on planet Earth, on humanity. That's her living. Jesus also had miracles. And these miracles, as for any other prophet, is to support his message. These miracles, or science, or proofs, or evidences, these will all support the message of Jesus. And <coughs> Jesus, we still believe that he did not die. He is still alive and he still his role as a messenger hasn't been finished yet. Before I finish, I would like to ask our non-Muslim brothers and sisters if they want to, if they are shy to answer, that's fine. Like how many of you have heard about the story of Jesus in the Quran before. All right. So for those who haven't heard about that, and also for those who read it before, if you would like to have further reference, we have free copies of the Quran outside. So please make sure to take a free copy. There is also a small uh, good booklet that you can uh, have as well for free and this would show 
what the Islamic view of Jesus Christ message and what do Muslims believe in him. Before I finish, I would like to also explain an important point. There was one of the verses just that says, we make no distinction between them. So as a Muslim or any other Muslim, if he believed in Prophet Muhammad and he said, I reject Jesus as a prophet or as a messenger, that means his Islam is invalid. Because one of the six pillars of Islam is to believe in all the prophets and all the messengers, to believe in all of them. So Islam doesn't make higher status between prophets for us to when we appreciate. We all worship or all worship one God and we all believe in these prophets with no distinction. So I would like to thank you and if you have any questions we would be happy to try to answer your questions. Thanks very much. Anyone has a question? Any questions or comments? If you if you like, also we will be available afterwards. We finished a little bit early, so there will be more time. You can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion if you uh, more prefer to just have it with a bit of coffee. Um, so. Uh, does, does anyone have any any questions or comments? Yeah. I would like to thank everybody for coming and uh, especially the, the the University of Tasmania uh, Muslim Society here for hosting us. Um, one thing I can say is that um, about Prophet uh, Isa alayhi salam. One of uh, my, f my fondest, one of my uh, most favorite uh, chapters that I, I memorized is the chapter of uh, Surah Maryam. And it's a really amazing chapter, number 19. And I encourage uh, my, my brothers and uh, sisters here, Muslim, non-Muslim, to read it for yourself. And look at how the way God goes through those verses and tells us about about Mary, about the mother Maryam, our mother, Virgin Mary. How she was, and she was so emotionally in difficulty at that time. Excuse me. <laughs> but when you look and you look at it, and you, and you really go into that, those verses, I don't know. Okay. When you when you go through those verses, it not only it appeals to you, to your to your uh, senses, to your intellect as well as to the emotions. And uh, I guess nobody's listening to me, so uh, <laughs> I'll give it over to Brother Ali. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much to our speakers, Brother Hamdi and Brother Ismail. Alright, so I know you guys have been hearing this for about um, quite a while, I mean from the speakers, but I'll just sum it up. So for us Muslims, Jesus, Abraham, David, Noah are our beloved prophets. We respect them all the same, but to us, they're not God, as we believe in the Quran, and the Quran says clearly, like, 